My name is Leslie Menix Wolf, and I'm the Senior Product Marketing Manager at Science Logic, and I'll be your host for today. We're thrilled to have Brian Amaro, the Senior Infrastructure Analytics Architect from the Kellogg Company, join us to discuss the benefits Kellogg has achieved by integrating Science Logic with ServiceNow and automating the, their processes for incident configuration and change management. Kellogg has been working closely with Science Logic since November of 2013 and have achieved significant efficiencies across their IT organization. We'll be opening up for QA at the end of the discussion today. Please make sure that you submit any questions you may have via the Q&A chat or Q&A window, excuse me, not the chat window, and we'll answer as many of the questions you pose as possible when we get to that Q&A portion at the end of the discussion. So before we get started, I wanted to take a minute to introduce Science Logic. Science Logic removes the difficulty of managing complex distributed IT services through an all-in-one service assurance platform for hybrid IT. The platform uses patented discovery to find everything that's connected to your network, no matter where it exists, you know, whether it's in the data center, hosted, or in the cloud, and you get complete visibility across all technologies, vendors, clouds, and services. The real magic happens when we analyze the millions of data points that we've collected and we make sense of it all. We give you an automated and complete inventory. We show you the relationships across technologies. We notify you of issues that need immediate attention. And if you allow, we initiate corrective actions in real time. You can easily integrate the platform, the rest of your IT management ecosystem. In the case of ServiceNow, you can streamline and automate processes for creating and managing incidents, as well as populating and maintaining an accurate and up-to-date inventory of your IT assets in your CMDB. <clears throat> and ScienceLogic is the only solution to give you all of this in one tightly integrated platform. So with that said, let me officially introduce Brian. Brian is a versatile executive with 25 years of management and consulting experience in consumer goods and services industries. He specializes in continuous process improvement to deliver customer service excellence. Brian has experience in a variety of roles, including IT project management, professional services, product management, and account management. Brian's currently responsible for the global systems monitoring and management environments for the Kellogg company. In 2015, he redesigned Kellogg's global IT infrastructure monitoring system, utilizing science logic as the foundation for monitoring all devices across the entire environment. The redesign also included the implementation of operational strategies to maximize IT accountability and efficiency. Most recently, he completed the global science logic service now integration for automated incident generation from events and a ServiceNow X Matters integration for automated alerting from those incidents to the respective recipients. You're likely familiar with the Kellogg brand, but I'd like for Brian to first take a few minutes to tell us a little bit about the company, the key challenges they were to solve. Thank you, Leslie. <clears throat> the Kellogg Company is a 110-year-old Fortune 200 food manufacturing company headquartered in Battle Creek, Michigan. Kellogg produces and sells more than 1,600 cereals and convenience foods under brands such as Frosted Flakes, Rice Krispies, Cheez-It, Ego, Keebler, Kashi, and Pringles in more than 180 countries. <clears throat> Kellogg's sales in 2015 were $13.5 billion, making it the world's leading cereal company, second largest producer of cookies, crackers, and savory snacks, and a leading North American frozen foods company. Kellogg as a business has become intertwined with technology on a global basis. We operate primarily through five regions, North America, Latin America, Europe, Africa, and Asia Pacific. We have over 390 global locations, 33,000 employees, and manufacturing facilities in over 20 countries around the world. In IT, we support a very complex environment with over 300 different applications, 25 different operating systems, and a wide range of devices along with many classifications of devices, including AWS, Azure, a range of physical and virtual servers, VMware and Nutanix clusters, 
multiple databases, including Oracle, SQL, MySQL, MemSQL, multiple storage platforms such as VNX, Extreme IO, HP 2000, as well as many flavors of Cisco routers, switches, traffic shapers, and unified communication devices. Let's not forget all the different security appliances we also need to support in our environment. Like most of you, we recognize that we have gr a growing need to integrate and automate our technology stack and to continue to innovate or risk being unable to support the projected growth of our business. Thanks, Brian. So let's move on to the real meat of today's discussion. Um, why, why did you and the Kellogg team head down the path of integrating science logic with ServiceNow? Well, well, Leslie, I have prior experience with automation and specifically with automated incidents. I've worked with several vendors and tools in the past, in addition to advising companies who tried to build their own homegrown solutions. See, the things that most companies, including Kellogg's, lack are accountability and responsibility for handling events and tickets at the same time correctly. When I joined the company in June of 2010 as a consultant, Kellogg never had a globally defined monitoring system for their environment. I was brought in to assist one monitoring guy deploy the existing HP OpenView monitoring platform on a thousand or so key servers, along with a few hundred custom scripts that measured a multitude of metrics and alerts that went unnoticed and unresolved. An effort that, in my opinion, honestly, was a complete waste of time and energy. What it came down to when you think about it is the only time Kellogg ever really identified a problem was when a customer called to say, hey, I can't access a system. At times it could be a simple fix, at other times it could mean the whole plant was down for days and costing the company a few million dollars in lost production. So after a, a grueling two and a half years of fighting with the OpenView agents, and of course the lead monitoring engineer to monitor no more than 1,100 devices, monitoring at Kellogg was on the brink of being dissolved in the wake of a company-wide reorganization. In November of 2013, being the sole person left to maintain monitoring, I was given the opportunity to lead the redesign of the monitoring platform that would include a global presence and hooks into an HP CMDB. When I was looking for a monitoring platform, I was looking for a platform that provided more flexibility while requiring fewer human resources to deploy and maintain. Unlike an HP OpenView, BMC, Nagios, CA, or something that took 20 people to maintain, we wanted something that could grow with us as we matured in our environment. The problem was the old complicated HP OpenView system already gave people a bad feeling about monitoring. So I had a significant uphill battle to deal with. However, I knew if I could deploy a global monitoring system that monitored more devices with very few resources and was easier and more reliable to use, as soon as we started monitoring more devices, more people would be interested and care about what was going on with those devices. I also knew that monitoring more devices meant significantly more events would occur that people would ignore. So I had to be careful in how I socialize science logic. No matter what system you have, and I, I have to stress to the callers on right now, no matter what system you have, it doesn't matter if you have Nagios, OpenView, or XYZ ABC company. If you start sending off a million events per month, no one is going to pay attention to them. All right, so, so given all this, what were your primary objectives in this project? Well, Leslie, we really had two. We wanted to make people accountable for what was wrong with our environment, and more importantly, to provide people the ability to take action to make our environment better. We wanted people to not only fix events where the disk was 95% full, but also to identify where there are opportunities to improve the environment by addressing inconsistent naming conventions and making adjustments to ensure that everything is working correctly together. We wanted to provide this information as guidance to not only engineering, but to our architects and our application performance and application design teams, and we wanted to automate as much as possible. Okay, so you deployed science logic with these objectives in mind and immediately started running into some unforeseen challenges. Can you tell us a little bit about what you discovered? Yes, so what happened at Kellogg uh, was when we first deployed science logic, we suddenly had all this visibility into our environment. In fact, we didn't know certain devices existed until discovered by science logic. At the same time, people began to look at the events generated in science logic and realized wow, our environment isn't as clean as we thought it was. To complicate matters even more, about eight months after deploying Science Logic, Kellogg decided to replace the old HP CMDB and initiated a project to replace it with ServiceNow. Then, of course, to make matters even worse, during the ServiceNow deployment, our service provider took all our old data from the outgoing HP CMDB 
and dump the dirty data into the new ServiceNow CMDB. Well, of course, we knew that CI information was incorrect, and we, re we realized that if they gave that data to us, we'd never be able to pull the correct information to automatically create instances in ServiceNow. As we sp started to get more involved with the CMDB, it took the effort of infrastructure, myself, senior directors across the environment, including a few VPs, to convince the ServiceNow team that we have to clean up the CMDB. So, so you knew you had to clean up the CMDB. So how did you convince the team? Well, to be honest with you, we started looking uh, at, at the science logic events and we started asking questions, questions, real common sense infrastructure questions, such as if we are saying that we have 17,000 devices monitored and out of these, those 17,000 devices, 3,000 can't connect or pull metrics because SNMP is failing every single time, then what's really wrong with our environment? We were able to prove through those common sense questions that servers were not configured properly. Next, we started analyzing the data discovered by ScienceLogic versus the data in our CMDB. And we found that we only had 3,000 infrastructure devices in the CMDB that mapped to the 17,000 that ScienceLogic initially discovered. We also started to realize that to enable automation in ScienceLogic and, to, and provide the ability to create dynamic dashboards, reports, groups, and everything else, we really must have a standard naming convention or something standardized to use across the whole global environment. Well, guess what? We realized that we didn't have that either. We didn't have a standard naming convention and our subnets were not in the right location. The team started to realize that the CMDB could be a source of truth as long as it had automated and accurate information fed to it all the time. So Brian, once you exposed these environmental and data discrepancies, what were the steps that you used to determine, you know, or, or what steps did you determine you needed to take? Well, there were five major steps, although they, they were truly intertwined. We had to automate incident creation and management. When we first deployed ScienceLogic, we were quickly faced with over 8,000 events sitting out there, constantly alerting people, and yet no one was acting on them. No one was doing anything to fix the issues in our environment. We needed to start alerting on and fixing the problems in our environment, bottom line. The only viable option was to start creating automated instance by integrating science logic with ServiceNow and force the support personnel we hired to, to start taking action on the issues. Fortunately for us, there were SLA agreements in place with financial penalties if the service provider didn't meet certain KPIs or agreements on incidents. We warned the service provider that they would start getting all these incidents, they would miss their SLAs, unless everything started getting fixed and working better. Once we started automating incidents with ScienceLogic, magically, the service provider started to work the issues in our environment. We had to clean up, align, populate, and synchronize the CMDB. And that gave us the basis for looking at integrating ScienceLogic with the CMDB as well. Because even though we had incorrect data in the CMDB, which we were discovering all the time, at least if we synchronized what we discovered in ScienceLogic with the CMDB, it would start to correct the CMDB eventually through automation. So we started pulling data directly from the monitoring devices. Now, of course, that created a lot of controversy because the CMDB team questioned the accuracy of ScienceLogic because the data differ differed from what they expected. And as a result, we needed to you know, educate everyone on how ScienceLogic works. So we had to go through a whole education process to make sure everyone involved understood exactly how the ScienceLogic platform works, how it discovers all the devices from point A to point C. We had to explain that if configurations aren't set properly on the servers, we're never going to discover them properly. If standard naming conventions aren't used, we're not going to be able to automatically put that device in a group or apply standard policies or templates. If subnets aren't correctly allocated to specific warehouses or plants, then we'd have devices placed improperly within ScienceLogic. And if we don't resolve these issues, then it will be really hard to find and fix issues when they occur for a specific office, plant, or warehouse. Once everyone understood how ScienceLogic worked, they finally realized that we needed to clean up the CMDB. As we progressed with the CMDB cleanup, we started to automate additional processes, such as routing incidents to the right teams and enforcing and reflecting the change management process. Wow, it's really great to hear how you, you know, incrementally automated more and more processes uh, throughout the, this uh, this project. So, you know, can you tell us about some of the benefits that you've achieved with what you've implemented so far? Absolutely. Let's start with automated incidents. On average, it takes 10 to 15 minutes to create an incident manually and send it off to a team. 
But consider the scenario where you get a bunch of events all at once and you get bogged down. Now, what if you send the ticket to the wrong team? It sometimes can take up to 90 minutes to find the right support group or team. How often does this happen at Kellogg? Well, we calculated probably about 250 uh, times a month at Kellogg's. Initially, prior to the automation, um, we manually created 650, 900 incidents on an average month. Now consider all the incidents that were never created because there were so many events and there simply wasn't enough time to manually create the incidents. Science Logic was generating one to 3,000 events per month. That means approximately 2,000 events were not being worked because people were spending too much time manually creating incidents for other events. We've already seen approximately $19,000 in cost savings per month by automating incident creation and eliminating lost product, uh, productivity filling out the incident form. That's almost $228,000 per year with incident automation alone. If you add proper routing of tickets to the right team, those numbers increase to $51,000 per month or $612,000 per year. Just last month, we created 4,000 automated incidents, which, which amounts to 2,500 hours and equates to $213,000 of product, uh, productivity savings per month or $2.6 million per year if we still had to create incidents manually. So, you, you know, you've mentioned a couple times the need to clean up the CMDB. Can you elaborate on the process you established to populate and maintain that accurate and complete CMDB? Absolutely. As, as we started to automate incidents, we quickly started to identify discrepancies between the CMDB and the monitored environment. We had to work together with the CMD, CMD team to build the intelligence and automate the cleanup process as much as possible. For example, we couldn't create an incident on a server if there was no CI for the server in the CMDB. So one of the first things we needed to do was figure out how to align the CMDB with our monitored environment. We started out with 50,000 dirty records in the CMDB, 5,000 of which were infrastructure. ScienceLogic was discovering approximately 17,000 infrastructure resources. The align and merge logic was extremely extensive. Fortunately for us, the ScienceLogic platform provided the flexibility we needed to implement that logic. We could use any combination of the data in ScienceLogic to automate the alignment and cleanup process, which made what we initially thought would be a daunting task very manageable. For example, in some cases, we had to make sure that the CMDB was the trusted source. In other cases, ScienceLogic was a trusted source. And even in other cases, Science logic was a trusted uh, source for initial population, but ServiceNow became the source moving forward. Even so, there was still a lot of manual cleanup because the way that people thought the CMDB should be populated was inconsistent with how we actually work in our environment. Another example, the way change management handled decommissioned servers caused a number of problems when we tried to match the monitor servers to the CMDB CIs. Normally, when you decommission servers in the CMDB, the server loses its IP and name, but not its serial number. However, our change management process kept the name, the IP, and the serial number and simply marked it as archived. So we had to adjust the change management process and update the data to conform to the new process. Today, we're at about 90% accuracy, and the CMDB reflects approximately 14,000 devices that ScienceLogic continuously discovers in our monitor environment, then aligns and synchronizes with the CMDB. When new, new devices are added to the CMDB, ScienceLogic automatically starts monitoring them. And when new devices appear in, change, or disappear from the monitoring environment, ScienceLogic automatically discovers and updates the CMDB if appropriate. So as you began the, the process of automating the incident, what additional issues did you uncover? Well, one of the first issues we uncovered dealt with proper routing of incident tickets to the right teams. As I mentioned earlier, it could take up to 90 minutes to route an in, uh, issue correctly. Our CMDB team defined the default support groups in ServiceNow, one for each operating system as well as network and storage team. And you couldn't put a tag on a device outside of those default groups. So if another team needed to be notified, you couldn't do it. So if a, a server started experiencing issues, we couldn't alert the application team if their application was running on the box. And conversely, the application went down, we could only alert the Windows support team and not the application team. So we created, uh, we created new assignment group runbooks in ScienceLogic to override the default at the time of incident creation without overriding the default in the CMDB. We used the data ScienceLogic provided about the relationships between devices with runbook automation policies 
to update the ticket and align it to the right support group. Now we can alert and provide different levels of information to different teams off a single event. We also correlated parent-child relationships in ScienceLogic. So when a router goes down in our Omaha plant and 50 servers are affected simultaneously, we can now notify all teams about the router going down and suppress the rest of the events automatically. In the past, each team would receive multiple events without understanding truly why they were receiving them. By combining event correlation and suppression in science logic with the ability to overall override the default support groups, we now enrich the incident with more information. The router is down at this plan and everything below is down. Informing the application team that the application is down because of the router, while at the same exact time informing the network team that the router is down, avoids wasting time and chasing our tails to investigate 50 extra events. So if you think about it, we're not only saving money and creating in, uh, tickets automatically, we're saving money by not wasting the support team's time trying to fix non-events. Okay, so now you're routing the right incidents to the right team with the right information. What other process improvements have you made? Well, the main one, change management. One of the best ways to rid your environment of problems is to stop people from making changes that shouldn't be made. Um, we can now provide change management with 100% visibility if anything changes. Since we, are now, uh, since we now automate the sync process between all servers and their attributes in the CMDB, if someone removes or changes something such as processors, memory, drive space, whatever it may be, change management can produce a report on demand to identify devices that changed during the day and were not associated with an approved change request. Change management can then investigate to find out who made the change and, of course, why. At the same time, we want to facilitate the change process to be more agile while avoiding issues. Today, we look at the capacity and performance on our machines and see if we should make a change. In the past, capacity was being wasted in the Kellogg environment because there was no way to identify what was truly needed. Consultants, engineers, and architects would overbuild because they lacked the data to know what was available. For example, if an application was running poorly, an engineer would just add more memory. And if that didn't work, they'd add more CPUs without a change request. Now, because we automate the attribute update of every device, track the changes in our environment automatically, and trend the data with robust reports, it takes a little bit more effort to spend the Kellogg dollar freely. Oddly enough, the after effect of instituting these new policies CPU and memory upgrades have almost ceased to exist. In fact, we are noticing CPU and memory performance on machines in which applications are performing poorly, running at 3, 10, or almost 20%. So there was really no need to increase the CPU or memory. True sh troubleshooting would have uncovered a, qu a runaway query that was causing the application to perform poorly and not the hardware. But for us to know this, we needed to have the logical information that showed what was actually happening, and that had to be tracked. Today, because we automate the data collection and updates to the CMDB, we now have ready access to the information, so we can question when a change occurs outside of a change window, quickly determine whether it was necessary and, if needed, make additional changes. Wow. So given all that you've accomplished so far, are, are you happy with the results you've achieved to date, and, and what are your plans to, for tackling next? You know, Leslie, when you consider everything we've accomplished with Science Logic and Service now so far, we've matured and improved our operational processes far more than we've ever expected. I always knew down the road that automation would be there for creating instance, but the CMDB was never in my scope when we first identified Science Logic as our platform for monitoring. At the time, the CMDB was not really used by anyone at Kellogg. There was no accuracy in it whatsoever. However, as we started going through the process of automating instance and identifying the weaknesses in our environment, suddenly change management started getting involved. And then our application teams got involved. And gradually, everybody wanted to get involved. An up-to-date and accurate inventory can be a huge benefit to a company, not only in knowing your inventory, but also in cost savings. Given the volume of incidents we are seeing, annual productivity savings exceed $2.5 million just for automated creation and proper routing of incidents. If we were to factor in other improvements, such as taking less time to repair issues due to proper information being included in incident and fewer failures because staff are constantly following change management procedures, the cost savings would even be more impressive. Moving forward, we are still, you know, we are starting to identify patterns and in incidents. For example, if a server hangs or database is down, there are steps to take for troubleshooting. 
we are starting to add this information to the instance. By enriching instance to include information about where to look first, we expect to cut down, uh, down the time to resolve issues dramatically. For example, recently one of our LDS servers failed and the su support team got lost in the wi Windows event logs trying to figure out what went wrong when the real reason was the LDS service stopped. If we enrich the incident to state, hey, look here first as a recipe, the support team would have spent 10 minutes to restart the service, or better yet, SignsLogic initiated an automatic repair instead of 24 hours troubleshooting the problem. You know, troubleshooting is an art. How much of a benefit would it be if we could make it as easy as paint by numbers or connect the dots? Well, clearly you've learned a great deal during this, this rollout. Um, are, are there any lessons learned you'd like to share with us in closing? Yeah, I'd like to close with three lessons learned. First, plan for different data and process requirements. Whether you have a CMDB or not, if, if you haven't done this type of automation before where you can make people accountable for content accuracy, you must invest the time to determine how best to populate and keep your CMDB up to date. You should expect to have different requirements for data and processes, what data is needed, where and how the data is collected, and how will it be used across parts of your organization. I come from the financial services industry. They base everything they do on accuracy throughout the whole entire environment. If a person makes a change and doesn't follow the right procedure, doesn't incorporate the right naming convention or puts something in the environment, you know, and not in the right subnet, or doesn't configure something correctly, that person has the potential to immediately get fired because a change could cause an outage and cost a ton of money, millions of dollars a second. As far as infrastructure is concerned, they want to know everything is absolutely consistent across the board. In both cases, it's all about automating their procedures. Second, <clears throat> define how you want your incident management process to work. You should consider a, a variety of scenarios up front, such as what incidents do you, want to cre do you want created? How will you prioritize them? What information do you want provided? Who should be notified? How will you determine severities? What will you auto-resolve? How are you going to update, update tickets while all the info over time? Or will you need to create new tickets every time and so on? With ScienceLogic, you can do all of this. Other vendors do not give you the same flexibility ScienceLogic provides with their built-in automation. You can use a ton of information already available in ScienceLogic to map to your ServiceNow CMDB so you can drive even more innovation. Last, when designing your process, you should consider for everyone involved when and how they want to receive these incidents. It's not a matter of what monitoring thinks is right or what infrastructure thinks is right. We didn't anticipate the volume of incidents resolving automatically. Our support team wanted auto resolution, but the infrastructure teams didn't want auto resolution because they want to track every incident. So you should get your application team owners, your support teams, your service provider if appropriate, and any other stakeholders working with you. You should host a workshop to determine how the process should work for everyone involved. We conducted a three-day workshop to document how we wanted the process to work we decided exactly what could and could not be automated. And by doing that, we realized that we had to customize stuff. For instance, you know, XYZ app on server US org 001 doesn't want incidents resolved. However, support team on the same server wants incidents resolved for disk-based memory CPU. So we had to customize. Everyone was afraid that it was going to be a tremendously difficult to support the customizations we needed, but it wasn't. Science logic allowed us to do this very easily. All these issues should be ironed out very well in the beginning. Wow. You've clearly learned a lot from the Science Logic ServiceNow integration and automation process. And I'm sure everyone on the call today will be much better prepared to achieve similar time and, and cost savings by automating their incident and, and CMD management processes as well. Um, Brian, you know, I'd like to thank you for taking the time to share your experiences at Kellogg with us today. And, and at this point, I, I'd like to move to the Q&A piece because I'm sure people have questions that they would like to pose to you beyond the ones I've asked. And uh, so if you have a question, please submit it through the Q&A uh, window if you haven't already. And uh, we'll move into the, the Q&A portion here and uh, see if we can help answer any specific questions you may have. Okay, so one of the questions here, Brian, is uh, did you use or, or have uh, ServiceNow Discovery 
and was that being used to populate the CNDB? Actually, it was not. Um, we found that uh, ScienceLogic, uh, with their patented discovery system, actually was more robust and, and more accurate. Um, on top of it, it, it truly showed um, what we could discover in our environments um, using only IPs or DHCP, or, or if, if we wanted to actually uh, pull in SNMP, we had, we had multiple choices. Um, it, it pulled in devices that sometimes were questioned on um, why they were even in our environment. So it really discovered everything better than ServiceNow. Okay, all right, another question here. Uh, looks like, uh, I, I'm sorry, I didn't, didn't mention who that was from, but this one is from Rick Kingsley. Uh, how did the science logic monitoring solution contribute to the operational effici efficiencies that you gained? Well, the science logic monitoring system truly provided us with the ability to view everything in our environment. And, and break it down from there. Um, without that, we, we didn't even know what was in our environment. I mean, it was very difficult. We, we scanned every single subnet, every VLAN we had, and we identified devices that truly uh, we, we didn't even know existed. Just by doing that, we were able to get the specific teams involved to, to determine what was a valid device and what shouldn't be on our network. Um, unfortunately, um, a global company as we are, we discovered things that actually shouldn't have been there. So security got involved and we were able to actually secure our environment even better. So oper operational e efficiencies were gained by just having that simple visibility. Okay. Uh, was, was automation a, contrib a contributor as well, uh, Brian, would you say? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, when you think about this, <laughs> we deployed the science logic solution globally to every single region, all five regions we have um, at Kellogg's with two people. Um, so if there wasn't automation involved, we would never have been able to do it uh, with two people. If we had to deploy agents everywhere and if we had to do a lot of manual processes to install these agents, um, do everything that was necessary, there's no way we would have been able to do it with just two people. Now, just so everybody knows, my team has actually grown. We now have four people. Um, over two years, we've built it to four people and we maintain not only the science logic database with three portals globally, um, we also maintain the automation, uh, the sync server, uh, the integration between ServiceNow and science logic as well as X Matters and ServiceNow, all, all with four people because of automation. And that's truly what automation can do. Okay. All right, here's a, a question from, uh, and I may, uh, I apologize in advance, I might mispronounce your name, but Ignacio Pina. Uh, how challenging was it for you to set up access for science logic across all of your infrastructure? He specifically asked a science logic agent, um, and I'll let you address that as well, Brian. Actually, it, w it wasn't difficult at all. Um, si setting up science logic uh, access for everybody really just was as easy as creating a couple of global policies for specific teams to uh, to access the, the portals. Um, we are actually going through right now, um, I, I actually pushed it out to January because we have a freeze coming on at Kellogg, but um, we're incorporating single sign-on and active directory groups to place individuals in specific groups along with the specific policies to enable access globally for all 33,000 employees if necessary, which is a simple uh, group modification. Okay, all right. Um, another question here from Denise DuPont. Uh, what other tools besides discovery and science logic, the ServiceNow discovery and science logic, did you review when, when you were heading down this path? <laughs> wow. To share? Yeah, I, you know, I, uh, under, under uh, NDAs, I'm not allowed to say names, but let's just put it this way. When I did my analysis with ScienceLogic, <clears throat> um, I looked at 25 different vendors. Um, some of the vendors didn't even reply to some of my analysis questions. Others gave me very detailed information uh, of their monitoring platforms. And I, I, can, I can divulge this information. The, the big what used to be for didn't even compete. Um, they, they, they couldn't compete with what ScienceLogic offered. The ease of integration, the, the ability to deploy a solution globally with two engineers, um, the ability to automate incidents properly through an integration with ServiceNow, the ability to, uh, to take in consideration multiple assignment groups for possibly one event and then sync that to a CMDB just could not be compared to any other vendor out there. Great. 
All right. Uh, let's see. Another question here from Vincent Stefano. Uh, he asks this, uh, in the runbook automation, what logic or how did you determine what multiple events would be correlated and, and opening a single incident? Well, you know, that, that's actually, that's actually a, a good question because it, it was complicated. Um, due to the lack of organization within our environment, we had to actually physically search for all the routers and switches and, and servers that existed in all of our warehouses, um, offices, and, and plants out there. Once we discovered those through, through the discovery mechanism in ScienceLogic, we actually developed a, a, a simple runbook action that would look at the routers and switches and identify what devices uh, were actually connected to those uh, routers and switches. And then we created a parent of the routers um, and a, 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 a child of the switches and then grandchildren of all the, all the uh, other devices within a plant, warehouse, or office. With that being said, we could then alert on if the switch went down and these devices were connected to it, hey, only offer one event. If a router went down, well, we're not going to alert off the switches and the servers. We're going to only provide one level of uh, alerting at the router. But the most important thing is we are able to alert multiple teams when this happens. Um, even, even if we looked at the default group for a router going down would be the networking team, but we had to alert the application teams. We had to alert the Windows team. We had to alert the Linux Unix team. We had to alert the database team. All these teams had to be alerted off of one incident. And that's truly where the runbooks came in and, and that's how we designed it to do so. Okay. Now, uh, I, I'm gonna add on to that. So um, it, it, I think it might be helpful for you to, to help clarify on the complexity uh, that you ran up against. Wasn't <clears throat> the complexity tied to the lack of naming conventions and the inconsistency oh my gosh, in your yeah. environment. So, so it wasn't necessarily that science logic was complex. It was more that your environment wasn't following any standards. So we helped uncover that. Is that correct? Yeah, ab absolutely correct. And, and thank you, thank you, Leslie, for pointing that out. I need I need to stress to everybody: consistent consistency in your environment makes a monitoring life much easier. Um, we at Kellogg, of course, over the past 110 years have bought many companies. Uh, we bought Keebler, we bought Pringles, we're buying South American companies left and right now. Um, because of this, we, we never ever uh, utilized proper naming conventions globally. Everything was developed on a regional basis. So I have devices in Manchester, some of them named Virtual Server, some of them named uh, Yanni's server, some things in Australia or APEC named Yasun number one. I mean, we have all kinds of different things out there and without actually having the, the robust discovery tool that is, is within ScienceLogic, we would never have identified these inconsistencies. In fact, 2017 coming up, there's a valiant effort going through now to actually redefine and rename everything to our standard naming convention that has now um, been reversioned probably about a hundred times, I'll be honest with you guys, and, and people are finally getting aligned with actually making the Kellogg environment a consistent place to work and live. Great. All right, so I have a, uh, a question here from David Jones. So, you know, based on his understanding, there are various rules and, and, and policies, monitors, et cetera, in, in the ScienceLogic Power Pack. Um, and so there will ultimately be many, many discovered objects uh, for config in configuration management. So he's concerned about ensuring data integrity and, and only getting the objects that he wants in the CMDB. What can you tell him about the process for the CMDB sync that would make him feel comfortable? Well, actually, that, that's a very good point. Um, and it needs to be taken into consideration. And that's why we developed this, this three-day workshop. The three-day workshop truly consisted of 30 people. Um, it took only four people to configure the sync server and the integration with ServiceNow and ScienceLogic. But it really took about 30 people to really work out what attributes were going to be synced together. Now, the integration of Science Logic and ServiceNow has all the information you need to sync those specific properties, uh, objects together properly. In fact, as you build more and more runbook actions, 
they automatically get imported into the, the integration server and obviously will then populate the, the route you can take to actually implement that link of attributes between ScienceLogic and the CMDB. Now, the neat thing about this is, say you wanted to initially populate everything from, from ScienceLogic into the CMDB as just, I, I have an empty CMDB and I wanna run everything up there. You can elect to do that, flip a switch, and, and create an automated sync process then to only update when things are changed. Now you can also select all the objects that, or all or any of the objects I should say, that you only want to sync. So you could do an initial push and an initial merge with the CMDB, and then you can flip back the switches to basically say, okay, I have my initial merge, I don't want that ever changed again. At the same point in time, we also reverse the direction. For instance, Production and development devices in the Kellogg environment are huge. Our, our support groups don't want to deal with anything, don't want to receive any incidents on development devices. Well, we leave the control up to them by incorporating a field and object within the CMDB called production or development. If they select this environment of production or development in the CMDB, we sync backwards through the sync server into science logic updating the science logic record now, which then automatically and dynamically updates the groups, updates the SLA reports, updates all the incident reporting that's provided the change management, and also updates the reports that hold and bind our support group to specific uh, uh, SLA KPIs. So with this process, we can go forwards, we can go backwards, we can go forwards and backwards, and we can do a one-way merge if necessary. All this is available and with easy to use buttons and easy to use instructions on what to turn on and what to turn off, at, while at the same point, point in time, giving you the flexibility to import those new runbooks that you want in your environment. It, th that's, a, that's another thing that I've never heard any vendor to do. And I've been doing this for over 16 years. I've never heard any vendor doing this before. Okay. So, so Brian, can you talk a little bit, like you, you talk about buttons, uh, you know, can you talk a little bit about the, the interface and how you would actually define uh, or align uh, and, and um, specify what matches to what? It, it's through a, a UI? Um, yeah, kind of yeah, I'll, yeah. It's, it's basically a, a UI, a very friendly UI that you would look at and, and you would have import fields or automatic sync fields, uh, attribute fields, um, define attribute fields within ServiceNow. Um, as well as within science logic. And you, you really can just look at, so for instance, um, if you want to look at production or development within science logic, that is actually a function in the asset section within science logic. In service now, it's U underscore environment. All we do is map that together and we enable the sync process and now forever and, and always, you have a synced, uh, you have a synced uh, field within the CMDB as well as service now, or science logic, I should say. Uh, same point okay. in time with a run book. If you establish a run book, and you want to enable it to um, as, uh, assign to a specific group, you can elect uh, to assign it to any group imported from ServiceNow with a simple click of a button and a change through a UI within uh, ScienceLogic. Great, okay. I have another question from Ignacio. Uh, are you currently monitoring any public cloud-based infrastructure or thinking about doing it? Well, like like I said before, we, we monitor everything in AWS. <clears throat> we have over 260 uh, instances in AWS. We have uh, multiple instances in Azure. Um, we have colo locations that we monitor. In fact, Kellogg was one of the uh, first uh, CPG companies to actually take SAP to AWS. And we monitor SAP completely, the server and uh, server's infrastructure databases uh, through ScienceLogic in, in AWS. Excellent. Okay. Uh, and Brian, I'm not sure that you know the answer to this, um, but I do if you don't. Uh, David Jones is asking about uh, support for domain separation with uh, ServiceNow and was wondering if you have it uh, and did that pose any problem for you with the sync server and the CMDB? I'll let you answer that, Leslie. Okay. I'm a, so, so the answer is you don't have domain separation. So the, yeah. the short answer is we do support it. Uh, with the sync server today. Uh, so if you do have domain separation, that should not be a problem uh, at all. Um, let's 
see. So Sean Hook asked a question. Uh, he is aware that uh, professional services is involved uh, with the ServiceNow integration, and he was wondering how that process was for you, and have you had to continue to engage with ScienceLogic professional services for additional work after the initial, or is it something that you've been able to do uh, independently? Well, that's that's the nice thing about ScienceLogic, and that, that's truly one of the reasons why um, we, we pick ScienceLogic is, is because of the professionalism uh, involved with their support teams, their professional services teams. We had absolute cooperation with their professional services team, all the way all the way to the developer of ScienceLogic themselves, right? We made sure that the individuals who needed to be on the calls were there, and ScienceLogic made sure the individuals that needed to be on the call were there. Um, if it were required at a 10:30 at night meeting because something just didn't seem right, or if it required you know 12, 15 hour days to hit a deadline, the final um, push to actually go live with this actually took 30 hours for Kellogg's to complete because the amount of data that we were merging, syncing back and forth, and all the rules we actually customized within the integration. Um, the support level was absolutely phenomenal with with uh, with ServiceNow, I mean with ScienceLogic. Um, have we had to engage them afterwards? Very minimally. Um, the sync server, the, the integration server process works flawlessly. Um, we haven't had any issues where it goes down. We haven't had any issues that cause any concern right now. Uh, in fact, uh, we're going through a change this weekend. ServiceNow is changing its IP on us. And truly, we, we're not too worried about it because we do everything through the uh, ServiceNow URL anyway with ScienceLogic and the integration server. So it's really not a concern. We're going to be testing it, but we're not putting the, the you know, high pay engineers on there right now to so solve any problems because we don't anticipate any. Knock on wood, okay. nothing happens. But um, with the runbooks and everything, as, as long as you know how to use the runbooks, the 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 integration process is very easy to utilize. Thanks, Brian. So, uh, Vincent, just to give you a quick answer, I, I did say that was the last question, but you you asked about what the sync server is. Basically, that's the the feature uh, that supports the synchronization. It's a synchronization server. Uh, it, it synchronizes between the CMDB and ScienceLogic. So it's that feature that allows us to do the mapping uh, between the data sets, so that it will uh, drive um, the the automations and the synchronization between uh, the two different uh, solutions. So, uh, you know, at this point, uh, we want to wrap up. We didn't want to use the full hour uh, for the recording uh, because most people don't like to listen to, to a full hour of, of a recording. But I, I do want to say that if you have additional questions, like to speak with Brian, uh, we will certainly uh, work with you to set something up with him. Uh, feel free to reach out to me. I've shown my email address here uh, on, on the slide so that you can reach out to me, Leslie Menix wolf at sciencelogic.com, and we can uh, work with Brian to get back to you uh, with a response, either through email or uh, with a phone call. Uh, one final request. Please take uh, a minute uh, as you exit the session to provide us feedback. We have a, a three-question survey. I'd love to get your feedback on today's session. Once again, thank you so much, Brian, for taking the time to uh, share your stories with us and with the audience today. You've been truly great. So thank you all for joining us today. Have a great rest of your evening.